This is the Hockey Podcast Network, your home for hockey talk on every team in the NHL. Ah, yes, the holidays where we all gather around the Christmas tree and you open up gifts or, in your case, envelopes from your Aunt Nana and your Great Grammy and other relatives that you see once a year and vaguely remember. And you get $5 here, $10 here. And after a while, it actually adds up to some real money. And then it's also the time of year where you can impress your family with your hockey knowledge. As you all sit around the TV and watch the game, you're the one that's giving out the uh, key points, the key stats, the injured players. You know the ins and outs of the game. Now it's time to take all that money that your relatives gave you, that $5 here, $10 here, put it all in one big pool, and turn that knowledge of hockey of yours into some real cash. With my bookie, there is nobody that gives you more ways to win than they do. That includes Johnny Knuckles at the corner. My bookie has the best payouts and better odds than any other sports book, and I would not be telling you this if they weren't the best. Now, with my bookie, you can risk a little like that money you got from your Aunt Nana, or you can risk a lot, like that money on Christmas gifts that you were supposed to spend on, you know, gifts. And with this being the holidays, there are daily gifts, free plays, free spins, and a whole lot more. But here is the real kicker here. If you join now, my bookie will match your deposit halfway all the way up to $1,000. That means if you deposit that $100 you compiled from Aunt Nana and Grammy, you can receive an extra $50 free to play with on my bookie. It's house money, folks. If you deposit $200, say your Aunt Nana was really rich this year, you get an extra $100. And on and on, you get the idea. Just use the promo code THPN. That's the Hockey Podcast Network, kids. THPN to activate the offer and take advantage of this great deal from my bookie. Visit mybookie.ag today. It's simple. You play, you win, you get paid. Calgary Flames fans, it's time for Flames Unfiltered. Entertaining and controversial hockey talk with your host Brad Burry. Two solid games nets the Flames three out of a possible four points. One more chance at two points before we hit Christmas break. Good evening. Welcome to the podcast, Calgary Flames fans. Flames Unfiltered, episode 25, recorded and on December 22nd, 2019, a Sunday evening. Just after the Flames knock off the Dallas Stars in Dallas, 5-1. to one, A pretty convincing win tonight, and one that made me really happy. The holiday season is here. Flames Unfiltered would like to wish all of you a very, very Merry Christmas, and make sure you spend a lot of time with your family and enjoy uh, what's really important to all of us. As much as we love following the Flames and love talking Flames hockey, um, Family is what's uh, important. Friendships are what are what is important, and the holiday season is uh, the best time to celebrate those. Sorry for the way I sound. <laughs> I've been sick all weekend, and I mean I'm not even I can't even say I'm fighting it because I'm flat out sick, and I apologize. I am going to struggle through this episode this evening, but uh, I guess uh, players play hurt, and uh, <laughs> tonight. Uh, I am definitely, definitely playing hurt. Speaking of getting hurt, what is with fights in the stands and fights in the concourses between hockey fans? Like, what's going on? Aren't we better than all the stupid fights we see in NFL games and and all those things? You know, we've seen fights in Boston. We saw some real bitchy lady in Boston. Videos all over that go viral and... I've had personal experiences at Madison Square Garden where a fan in his 30s or late 20s thought it was appropriate to 
bully and badmouth a 10 to 15 year old kid wearing a Philadelphia Flyers jersey, which I thought was extremely ridiculous and distasteful and actually was one of multiple things that ruined my experience at Madison Square Garden and thought it was where I rank it as the dead last place I like to go watch pro games and I've been to 15 rinks so good job New York fans good job now Calgary what the heck can we got a fight in Calgary now? now I've heard mixed reports that it was at a casino and I've heard reports that it was in the concourse and I don't know where it was or what it was but some Montreal Canadiens fans get into a tussle and I don't even know if it was with Flames fans. I, I pray it wasn't because God, do I, I do not want that uh, that image in our city. Anyways, rolling on. Today's episode, line shuffle is getting old. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about the Pacific Division at Christmas time. Do a Harvey's Dog House, which is a feature we do every Sunday night in the episode. And we got a great, great fan question tonight. A big thanks goes out to the Hockey Podcast Network. We are very, very happy to be part of them. Make sure you check out the Hockey Podcast Network. Podcasts from all 31 teams twice a week. Every team, everywhere. I mean, everything you need to know about your favorite team. Entertaining episodes each and every week. And also check out flamesunfiltered.com for Flames news, Flames updates, Flames social media, highlights, videos, and of course your latest episodes of Flames Unfiltered. Every team, everywhere, the Hockey Podcast Network. Hey, the Hockey Podcast Network, which we are very, very proud to be part of, has got a new podcast out. It's not totally new anymore, but it's damn good. Tales with TR, a hockey podcast from Terry Ryan, a former NHL player. You've heard him on Spittin' Chicklets. He is quite the entertainer. Episode three is out. Make sure you go to episode one. Listen to all three episodes. All three are very, very good. Must listens. And please check that out on the Hockey Podcast Network. Okay, Flames fans, time to get through these game recaps as I blow my nose again for the 15,000th time today. Thursday night, let's recap that game as Montreal came to the Saddle Dome, and my favorite thing about that whole night was the uniforms. I love those white retros. Boy, was that good. A couple other thoughts. I thought Calgary played a pretty damn good, solid game that night. For the most part, 60 minutes. This team did not trail in that game at all until the final score. And quite honestly, one point was good, but I think this team deserved maybe a little bit better fate that night. Calgary jumps out into the scoring in the first period with two goals. Matthew Kachuk gets his 13th at the 7.34 mark, one nothing Calgary. With just eight seconds to go in the period, Calgary start strikes on the power play. Elias Lindholm, his 15th. Kachuk Gaudreau with this assist on that one. Kachuk rolling up the points. The second period is where things weren't good. And this is why I can't say the Flames played a full 60. Because they didn't. Because the second period was god-awful. It's been a problem this whole season, to be honest with you. In the second, Montreal evens the score 2-2. Goals, Gallagher is 15th. Armina is 12th. And, uh, yeah, it's 2-2. Then we go to the third and it's like, well, what's going to happen? Oliver Shillington scores on a great play from Johnny Gaudreau and Noah Hannafin. At the 625 mark, Calgary up 3-2, and I thought, yeah, Calgary's in the driver's seat here. Now things are looking good. They hold that lead for about five minutes, and Nick Suzuki scores on kind of a weird one. I don't know. I mean, it wasn't, it was just, it was an odd goal. They tie it up 3-3. We go to overtime, and then in overtime, Max Domi scores an unassisted goal, his seventh of the year at the 352 mark. Montreal escapes Calgary with two more points as they have a very, very, very strong Western Canada road trip. They did lose last night, I guess, to Edmonton, but uh, picked up quite a few points, and the Habs bumped themselves right back up into the standings. Then tonight, Sunday night, Rogers hometown hockey, Calgary in Dallas, and this was a full 60. I 
I'm not complaining about this one at all. I thought Calgary looked good from start to finish. I thought we had a slight hiccup in the second period. Nothing that uh, was too upsetting or or anything that we couldn't overcome. But a full 60, and that's nice because second periods have been a, a bugaboo for this team this year and, and not so much tonight as after seven minutes of the period, Calgary got things going and scored two in the second Let's run down the scoring. Majiapani gets on the score chart right away at the 12-11 mark, his seventh of the year. He has had a ton of shots on goal lately, had some struggle, struggles scoring. Good to see him get on to the scoreboard. Assists on that one from Lindholm and Kachuk. Dennis Grinoff scored for the Dallas Stars at the 12-49 mark, just 30-some seconds after Calgary scored and take the lead as he blew by Noah Hannafin and gets his eighth of the year. We're 1-1 after one. Into the second, Matthew Kachuk gets on the board, his 14th on the power play, and you know what? Calgary rattles off four in a row, all four on the power play. Kachuk with his 14th, Lindholm Monahan with assist. Then just two minutes later, Monahan scores on the power play. He has 11th of the year. We go into the third, finally, he gets off the schneid. He's kind of been on my bad list lately. Michael Backlund gets his fourth of the year at the 10-21 mark on a really, really strong breakaway. I don't really breakaway, a one-on-one battle that he drives to the net and gets a beautiful goal. His fourth of the year again, and that one also on the power play at the 10-21 mark. Derek Ryan seals the deal with a shorthanded empty net goal, his sixth of the year at the 17-56 mark. Calgary wins 5-1 to one in Big D, a place where Calgary's really, really struggled over the years, and, and good to see that they were able to pull it together tonight and get a very, very much-needed two points. A couple things and a couple thoughts on this game that I don't understand. What is with the Dallas Stars fans banging on the glass? Is this not the most stupid, unreal thing you'll ever see? I know it happens in almost every single arena, and we'll never figure out why or why this happens but tonight i just thought it was out of control i i it seemed like every time a player skated by the glass some bozo was up banging on the glass another thing i noticed is way to way to stick with your team dallas you're down by two goals in the mid third and uh you're out you're gone you're not watching anymore look like a coyotes game for the second half of the third period there's nobody there it's crazy. Nice to see Corey Perry still an ass in Dallas as he was in Anaheim. Tons of slashes tonight. A big cross check to Gaudreau. As he goes by the bench, he gives a stick jab into the bench. That should have been a penalty, but nope. Nothing ever gets called on Corey Perry. One of the classless players of the National Hockey League as we roll on. Inside Edge Hockey News. Bringing you inside the game. Okay, Flames fans, pretty darn happy with uh, this weekend's three of four possible points, but there is one thing that has got me a little bit riled up, and I want to talk about it. Probably won't talk about it long because, quite honestly, I am shot. I am I am struggling. Um, line shuffling. I'm getting sick of it. Jeff Ward's been in behind the bench, I believe, and it's now for 11 games, I believe. Could be wrong on a... I could, I might be wrong on that, but I believe it's 11 now. And I understand that you're going to change your lines based off injuries and, and many other variables. But I honestly believe that we've tried every possible line combination known to man. I don't think you can juggle these lines any more than we've seen this year. And I'm kind of getting a little bit worried about it because we're almost to the midpoint of the season. And when are we going to have this team be able to work as a group and build some continuity? Gel together. It's crazy. Tonight we saw Gaudreau, Monahan, Backlund, Kachuk, Lindholm, Majapani, Lucic, Ryan, Bennett, Ronaldo, Jankowski, Reeder. Defense, I'm not too worried about that. We've pretty much been stayed pretty much the same there with the Giordano, Brody, Hannafin, Hamannick, Stone, Anderson, slash Shillington, Anderson. So I'm not, not complaining about the defense. But reading a great article on flames website and ryan pike wrote the article so i will definitely give him credit for this because 
it, it, he does a he does a really really good job and uh, he broke this down the line combinations and the production you're getting out of the line combinations please go to flamesnation.ca to read the full article it's it's very good ryan pike did a great job so i'm definitely giving him some credit but i'm stealing a little bit of his stuff here just as talking points but um it's interesting since jeff ward took over the Lucci Ryan dube line has seen the most ice time. Plus, another surprise here, and we'll go off tangent just a little bit. Dubé scratch tonight, a healthy scratch, along with Fro League. And when I say that, I always say, okay, as an NHL coach, unless there's injuries or something like that, you should always post the best roster you possibly can. So by having Fro League out and Dubé out, you're telling me that you feel that Zach Ronaldo is a better player. Yeah, just think about that one as a little, just a little bit. Now I know Dallas is a big, strong, tough team, but I've never seen Michael Frolik back down. And quite honestly, if Dylan Dubé is going to be an everyday player in the National Hockey League, you better damn well get used to it. And I haven't seen him back down at all either. So I'm not sure why we didn't field the best lineup tonight, even though we win. But anyways, going back to the Ryan Lucci Dubé line, seventy three point five eight minutes on ice, goals for four, goals against one. The Maggiapani Lindholm Kachuk line, goals for, goals against two to four, two four, four against. Not very good. The Backland Monahan Gaudreau line, which is what we saw tonight, and and would look good tonight. Five goals for, one against. See, there you go. You got that line. Now leave it alone. The Lucci to Ryan Dubé, 4-1. to one. Leave it alone. The Reader Jankowski Frolik line, two goals for, three against. Now, not so hot. I think, you know, those stats right there establish two lines. And I, I'm not giving up on the Majapani lindholm kachuk line. I think that's a good line. Let's just keep that. So there you got your lines. Leave them alone. Let them build some unity. Let it. Let them figure it out. Let them work together. Now let's stop changing the lines all the time. Defensive pairings. I'll roll through them really, really quick. And I do recommend you go to FlamesNation.ca and read this article. Hannafin Hamannick six goals for five against. Giordano Brody four goals for two against. Shillington Anderson three four one against. Giordano Anderson three goals. Four, one against Hannafin Anderson, zero goals for three against Brody Stone, three, four, one against Shillington Stone, two, four, one against. I think we got a good defensive lines. I don't have any problem with them. Just leave Gio and Brody together. They help each other. Hannafin Hamannick are solid. Yeah, was it? you have Anderson with either Shillington or Stone. I like Stone tonight. I thought he was really, really good. And I think that he is one of the unsung heroes on this team this year. I think he is tough every single night out there and finds a way to just be gritty and fight through things and and get the job done. And he's often forgotten. InsideEdgeHockeyNews.com Let's talk standings at Christmas. And we'll obviously go through this again at the midway point of the season. But always fun to kind of break down the standings at Christmas time. And just see where Calgary sits in the Pacific. One game before Christmas break against the Minnesota Wild tomorrow afternoon. Extremely short, ridiculous travel schedule. But let's roll down the standings as we sit tonight. And I will see if they've updated since the game ended. And I don't think they have. We'll go through them here. Arizona sits at 46 points, leads the Pacific Division. Two back of them is the Vegas Golden Knights. Two back are also two back is the Edmonton Oilers at 44. One back of them, Calgary Flames at 43. Vancouver sits fifth at 40. San Jose 34. Anaheim 34. LA 34. Now, can we all agree that probably those three teams are out? Barring a miracle from San Jose, which is probably the only team of that group that could do that, this is going to be pretty tough sledding. Pretty difficult to get back into it. Actually, when I look at this, I look at Arizona and I say, if I had to predict, I'd say this team falls. Vegas, I think, will keep going forward. 
I would say because Vegas is six two and two in their last ten, which is really good. Arizona surprising six four and zero. Another win tonight with Taylor Hall. I don't know. I have my doubts on this team, but you know, every time I say that, they win another game. So I think that's a team that could prove me wrong this year. Edmonton's and a st- stretch of struggles here, three six and one in their last ten. I see them falling, and we're going to get to see them next Friday evening after the holidays are over, and we'll talk about that later in the show. That's going to be a battle. Calgary 7-2-1 in their last 10, which is pretty good. Vancouver 5-5-0 five, five, and oh in their last 10. This team's a team that wins, loses, wins, loses to wins, loses to wins. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to see Vancouver. I think that's a team that'll hang around, but it is going to have a tough time. San Jose and their new coaching staff, 2-7-1 in their last 10. I think they're done. Anaheim 4-6-0. I think they're done. And LA 4-4-2 in their last 10. I think they're done. So I think it's a five-team race. If I had to make my predictions right now, I think the top three are Vegas, Calgary, Arizona, Edmonton, Vancouver on the outside as I think five teams will get in from the Central. And I know Pacific Division fans are going to hate me saying that, but I do believe that that's where it stands. Flames news, not much to talk about this week. And I don't know, maybe that's a good thing. No injuries. Usually this is where we talk about injuries or call-ups or anything. And Not much to talk about. Zach Ronaldo played his 500th pro game tonight, 357 in the National Hockey League. 143 in the minors. Every team, everywhere, the Hockey Podcast Network. Make sure you check out the Hockey Podcast Network as they release podcasts from all 31 teams twice a week. Episodes release Monday mornings and Thursday mornings. All 31 teams, great, great hockey news. Every team, everywhere, the Hockey Podcast Network. Time to get to Harvey's Doghouse. And tonight on the show, another episode where I had to pick a guy for Harvey's Doghouse, and it was pretty hard because no one's really been awful. Um, so tonight's selection was, was a little bit difficult. I, I kind of had another guy in mind, and then <laughs> he ruined it tonight with a goal. But And in and, and really good play. He's actually been really good lately, and that's Michael Backlund. He was kind of on my watch list and because offensively he's struggled this year. He's only got four goals. And he's had a tough time finding the back of the net, but he's been playing good. And I just, he, it was just like one of those nights. And I think when he came in tonight and beat the defenseman wide and was able to just tuck that in, you could just tell the look on his face, like, Oh, get this monkey off my back. And I expect him to really take off and uh, get on maybe a little bit of a scoring streak. Cause this guy knows how to put the puck in the net and has struggled lately. But my guy tonight is Noah Hannafin. One point in those last five games, a minus four, the problem isn't so much on an offensive as I am more worried about him defensively. You know, you see tonight as he gets beat wide, and he has a tendency to get beat wide, and what surprises me because he's a very strong skater. And I don't know if it's his rotation from forward to backwards that allows that player to get a jump on him, but you know, he has a tendency to get beat wide like that. We've seen it a few times this year. And you know what? Here's another topic on Noah Hannafin. He has horrible luck because I'm serious. He doesn't get beat that often, but when he does, it seems like it's a goal every single time. So I feel bad for the guy. I love him. He's a good part of this team. I hate putting team guys in the doghouse, but uh, he's my guy this week, Noah Hannafin. Moving on to the fan question, we did a Facebook poll this week with our good friends at Flames Hub and Calgary Flames fans on Facebook. Some great Calgary Flames facebook groups that i recommend any calgary flames fan join it's great talk all week long about all kinds of different things in flames land and my question this week was a huge response over 400 responses thank you very much guys i it's fun to see what the fans out there actually think and i usually agree with most everything i'm gonna disagree a little bit with this one but uh today's question what is your favorite opponent to watch the flames play so I listed Vancouver, Edmonton, Vegas, Arizona, San Jose, Anaheim, LA, and other. So all the teams in the Pacific Division, and then other. And I expected some some write-ins, and I got a few. I actually got thirteen write-ins, and I'll read off who they are. Thir- thirteen people 
said other that's three percent of the voting population and teams they talked about were toronto montreal which no surprise there two other teams that they did name were philadelphia and colorado philadelphia surprises me i don't know if there's a the secret johnny Gaudreau connection or if it's that every time we play that team it seems like it's a high scoring wild game um I, I i don't know what it is there but uh that, that was named and then colorado and that probably is just because they kicked our ass in the playoffs last year and hopefully we get uh, a chance this year to prove that we aren't a bad hockey team in the postseason anaheim um one team got zero votes in our division that was arizona anaheim and san jose only got one so they didn't even register on the thing next up after that was vegas with 23 that's six percent of the voting I would agree on that. That's kind of tough to have been a rival because they pretty much handed it to the Flames every time. Well, every time we've been to the T-Mobile, we've lost. So it's tough to create a rivalry when you just don't ever beat them. Um, Los Angeles, 9% with 36. And that one surprised me. Um, 36 is quite high, I thought. Um, 9% of the people, and I think a little bit of that had to do with the Kachuk Dowdy thing. Um, but 9% was a pretty surprising number for me. Now, the two I expected to be one to was Edmonton, Vancouver, but I did think it would be a lot closer than it was. Vancouver got 43 votes. Edmonton gets 296. Um, yeah, I will agree the Battle of Alberta, Alberta is amazing, but it has lost its luster lately because both the teams, especially the Oilers, have been irrelevant. Well, when one of the two is not relevant it's hard to have a strong rivalry. Now, is this the year we meet in the playoffs? I don't know. Boy, would that be fun? But the Edmonton gets 72% of the votes, Vancouver 10%. So I thought a lot about this, and I thought, well, which team do I get most pumped to watch? And you know, honestly, I, I think it's Vancouver. And I don't know if it's the brawl or that one of my really good friends is a Canucks fan, so we have a lot of banter back and forth. Um, I think that plays a big role in it. Um, I don't know. I, I get pumped. I, I Don't get me wrong. I get super excited for for Edmonton, and I can't wait for the 27th so we can watch that. But just as excited as I am for that, two nights later when they take on the Vancouver Canucks in Calgary, I'll be just as excited and pumped for that one too. So those are definitely my top two. Vancouver is probably my leader. One game to preview. We had just have one game to preview. And that's tomorrow as there's a super quick turnaround. Calgary wins tonight in Dallas, has to hop on an airplane, fly all the way across the country, all the way to the, from southern U.S. to northern U.S. to the Minnesota. Getting Minneapolis late, late tonight and play a late afternoon game. Four o'clock central start. That's early. That is an early game for, ha- for playing that far away. I have no idea what the schedule maker was thinking on this one. But anyways, the Monday out late Monday afternoon game is the Minnesota Wild 17 15 and 5, 39 points, 6 in the Central, taking on the Calgary Flames 19 14 and 5, 43 points, 4th in the Pacific. Minnesota coming off a complete kicking on Saturday in Minnesota to the from the Winnipeg Jets 6 to nothing loss. Oof. How will they respond? I'm sure they'll be very very angry. Calgary again coming off that 5-1 win tonight in Dallas. Things look good in Calgary. Maybe we'll roll with the same lines. I don't know. I think that would be a good idea. What do you guys think, hockey fans? Maybe we're on the same lines? Ugh, I'm getting tired of it. I want to gel. I want to get these guys rocking and rolling and playing good together. And we've got to let them let them play together. Wish everyone a very, very Merry Christmas. Check out our next episode that will come out during the Christmas holiday season. Be safe. Be with family. Merry Christmas. Get connected. Flames Unfiltered can be found on Twitter at Flame Unfiltered. And also make sure you check out our Facebook page at Flames Unfiltered. Check out host Brad Brood on Twitter at Brad Brood. And if you like what you hear, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. You can find Flames Unfiltered on all the major podcast players. Consider subscribing to Inside Edge Hockey News on Patreon. That'll get you exclusive content and much more. Thanks again and enjoy the hockey. Thanks for tuning in to Flames Unfiltered. Check back for more action-packed Calgary Flames talk. 
You're listening to the Hockey Podcast Network on Twitter at HockeyPodNet. New episodes every Monday and Thursday. Download at the HockeyPodcastNetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. This has been a production of Inside Edge Hockey News Radio, brought to you by the Hockey Podcast Network. This production is copyrighted and distributed by the Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.